Let's talk about a not so obvious but still interesting engineering topic today, mirror design. For the last 30 years, cars usually have two side mirrors which are exposed to the airflow. And because of that, their shape and development changed a lot over the years. At first, these mirrors were being kept close to the car to reduce the frontal area. Then, there were attempts to reduce the high pressure in front of it and to guide the air more gently around the mirror. But the problem of this design was not just the car wash, a problem was the huge wake of the mirror which touched the side window. The turbulences induce vibrations on the side window, which works like a speaker. In other words, it's loud at higher speeds. So manufacturers worked on pushing the mirror more outboard to create something like an air scarf between side window and mirror housing. So the turbulences would stay away from the side window and the car would be quieter at higher speeds. But now there was still the mirror mounting in the way, which still connected to the side window. And because the mirror was further outboard now, there needed to be a mechanism to fold the mirrors and such a hinge is not small. And it's hard to optimize aerodynamics here. So there was still a separation bubble on the side window which created noise. Manufacturers now turned to mount the mirrors on top of the door. Especially with better insulation and electric cars, aeroacoustics has become a very important field and companies try to optimize this area as much as possible. So with the mounting point below, there are no turbulences on the side window anymore and the car is quieter. Also, there was a chance to get rid of the hole in the fender for side indicators, which is an additional production step. And so many of the manufacturers brought their indicators into the mirrors. But in the end, the mirror mounting on the door also meant that there needed to be an additional hole in the door and reinforcements. More and more technology went into the mirrors and they became larger by law. So to save costs, manufacturers went back to the standard mounting on regular cars but kept the design for more expensive cars. And there is a design which sits between these two concepts. We can see it on Teslas and BMWs. They use a thin side mounting which sits on the lower side of the window frame. With the downwash in this area, the turbulences will not reach the side window and at the same time they save the hole in the door. And now let's take a closer look at modern mirror housings. The job of the shroud is to keep the mirror glass clean at all times. But if you create a standard mirror, the counter-rotating vortices at the back would splash the mirror with rainwater from behind. To avoid that, the mirror glass was pushed inside the shroud to better protect it and to have clear separation lines along the side. Manufacturers then installed a drain on top so rainwater would be caught here and drips down at the side. At the bottom they installed a gurney to separate the flow and push the wake down so rainwater doesn't spill up anymore. Another important area are split lines on the mirror housing. In the gap between shroud and A pillar are high flow velocities which are likely to trip over split lines. Because the path is so short the boundary layer here is still laminar and if this separates it could cause turbulences with high frequencies. In other words annoying high pitch sounds. So manufacturers try to avoid split lines in this sensitive area and sometimes install little vortex generators to create a turbulent flow along the surface to avoid that problem. The upcoming cameras will bring a lot of potential but they also have their own problems to solve. So I hope you liked this little insight and let me know which kind of weird mirror designs you have seen before. If you want to support this channel for more videos like this, please consider to become a B-Sport Club member and see you at the next one.